So here we are with the birth of the post office stamp in 1809. Um, this was the birth of the post office in 1809, this uh, stamp to um, celebrate and or commemorate that. For the convict settlers and officials arriving in the early colony of New South Wales, letters were the only way to maintain a connection with Britain. And ships arriving in Sydney were mobbed by people looking for mail and fraud, theft and extortion rather at the time were rife. On the 25th of April 1809, the government appointed Isaac Nichols to position or rather to the position of a postmaster. And Nichols, a former convict, took control of the distribution of mail within the colony and set up the first post office in his home. And um, this is from the Sydney Gazette from the 30th of April, 1809. And this story reads, complaints having been made to the Lieutenant Governor that numerous frauds have been committed by individuals repairing on board ships on their arrival at this port and impersonating others by which they have obtained possession of letters and parcels to the great injury of those for whom they were intended. So in late January 1788, the first fleet arrived in Botany Bay. Uh, and for those establishing the colony, the sense of isolation would have been immense. In June 1790, the second fleet sailed into Sydney Cove, bringing with it precious cargo, letters from home. In describing the arrival, Marine Officer Watkin Tench wrote, quote, letters, letters, unquote, was the cry. They were produced and torn open in trembling agitation and news burst upon us like meridian splendour on a blind man, unquote. In uh, Britain, a centralised postal service was established in 1512. King Henry VIII knighted the first master of the posts in 1516, a position responsible for establishing postal services in towns across Britain. And by the 18th century, the postal system was a public and unified service with letters being delivered in mail coaches by staff in uniform. But the arrival and distribution of mail in the early years of the colony was chaotic. The earliest recorded evidence of mail delivery in Australia appears in the Sydney Gazette on the 10th of July, 1803. The announcement authorised boatmen travelling between Sydney and Parramatta to charge for the delivery of letters exclusive of government service, each two pence. Like Britain at the time, there was no system of prepayment. The recipient of the letter was obliged to pay for its delivery and it was a haphazard process. Sending a letter overseas required a mixture of luck and resolve. The sender would need to wait for a departing ship first of all and entrust the letter with the ship's captain. And there were no guarantees that the letter would be delivered. Well, as the population of the colony grew, so did the volume of incoming mail. When ships arrived in Sydney Cove, they were mobbed by people searching for letters and parcels. And by 1809, they were escalating complaints to the Lieutenant General of Fraud, Theft and Extortion at the docks. And we read that article that appeared in the newspaper just earlier. But the New South Wales Corps, which had deposed Governor Bly in 1808, moved to reign in the chaos by appointing an official postmaster. And so on the 25th of April, 1809, Nichols, an emancipated convict, was appointed as mo uh, rather postmaster, a position that authorised him to board ships and receive letters and parcels addressed to the people within the colony, cutting out the fraudsters. He was ordered to establish uh, an office in his uh, home in George Street, where letters could be picked up and the collection prices would be fixed. So on the 26th of June, 1809, Isaac Nichols boarded the Brig experiment 
and collected the first bag of mail from Britain and this scene depicts that right here. This is recognised as the birth of the postal system in Australia. Isaac Nichols was born on the 27th of July 1770 at Cane, Wiltshire, England. At the age of 21, he was found guilty of stealing and sentenced to seven years transportation. Nichols arrived in Port Jackson on the 16th of October 1791 and Nichols was hardworking and possessed the rarest of convict qualities, uh, which was sobriety. His honesty and diligence impressed Governor Hunter, who appointed Nichols as the chief overseer of convict gains in Sydney. In 1797, Nichols completed his sentence and Governor Hunter granted him 50 acres, around 20 hectares of land in the Concord district. So the rise of Isaac Nichols was a meteoric rise and in 10 years he increased his land holdings to 1400 acres around 566 hectares opened an inn on george street established a shipyard and built the governor hunter which was a 33 ton trading schooner in 1806 nichols was one of the wealthiest businessmen in sydney on the 23rd of uh, June 1810, Governor Macquarie ratified the appointment of Isaac Nichols as postmaster and Nichols House became the first post office in the colony. Around 1812, Nichols created a postmark that read Sydney, New South Wales. Although updated, these postmarks are considered the precursors of the Australian stamp. And as postmaster, Nichols collected the incoming mail and published a list of people who had received mail in the Sydney Gazette. Nichols set the prices for collecting mail and kept the revenue as remuneration. And the cost of collecting mail was one shilling for a letter and up to five shillings for a large parcel. Nichols hand delivered mail to most of the influential people that were in the colony. Well, the post office was uh, run as a private business until 1825, when New South Wales Legislative Council passed the first Postal Act, and this transferred postal services to the governor who determined a postmaster's wage and set the prices for mail collection. The Postal Act also authorised the governor to appoint postmasters outside of Sydney. So the first postmaster was appointed in Van Diemen's Land, later called Tasmania, in 1812. A mail was brought from Sydney in sealing and whaling ships. Postmasters were appointed in the Swan River Colony, Western Australia, in 1829, Victoria, 1836, South Australia, 1837, and Moreton Bay, Queensland, 1842. In 1828, the first uh, postman began direct delivery in Sydney outlying settlements were serviced by contractors on horseback or on coaches. So each of these colonies operated their own postal services until they were uh, united at Federation um, in 1901. Uh, so um, each colony um, had their own stamps. New South Wales had their own stamp. Victoria had their own stamp. South Australia had their own stamp. Uh, the Northern Territory did not have their own stamp. They used the South Australian stamps. Western Australia had their own stamps. And uh, the, the first, as we've mentioned on previous videos, the first definitive or national stamp came into being with the Australian Kangaroo and Match stamp in 1913, replaced by the King George V stamp halfway through 1914. So from 1901, that's um, Federation, all postal services and telecommunications were operated by the Postmaster General's Department. And in 1974, these services were split with the telecommunications services becoming Telecom, now Telstra, and postal services became the Australian Postal Corporation, now Australia Post. So the postal system has expanded with the growing population and technological changes. And so from humble beginnings, with an aspira aspirational convict, Australia's Post now delivers around 2.6 billion letters per year. So I hope you enjoyed that history, as lengthy as it was, the birth of uh, 
the Australian Post Office 1809 and here is the pre-decibel stamp to commemorate that. Thank you for watching. Back again with another video very soon. Bye for now.